so I'm about to place my dome and uh, for colony planning actually it appears that this manta is really nice because it it, um, it has a lot of controls it can fly backwards, it can fly upwards, it can fly forwards and um, yeah that makes it really nice for colony planning because you need to do a lot of flying around so I'll be buying me myself one of these and then I might actually switch to that ship <laughs> I wonder if actually the bug still works probably does because I made the other video two days ago so uh, if I now take my Manta and it still has its entire cargo full even though normally it could only carry 60 tons I think um, it's a bit of a bug and a bit of an exploit maybe but I'm gonna do it now anyway because it makes stuff faster um, well, what I've heard is that if you do this, uh, you cannot actually hyper jump when you're you have too much stuff in your cargo. However, I'm not doing any hyper jumping at the moment. I'm just flying from gate to gate. This thing doesn't even have a hyperdrive at the moment. So. So let's see Ultima Gate. And we can go to Last Frontier. The only reason I press view range now is that you can actually see the entire planet. It looks quite nice. It actually looks habitable, even though it isn't. It's it's very poisonous uh, for humans and too much gravity. Um, but it looks like a nice planet. Um, I'm going to put my my dome a bit differently than in carbonite. In carbonite, I just put it in the middle to to extract hydrogen from the air in order to make fuel for people that come and visit so they can uh, buy hyperdrive fuel as well when they come and visit uh, so they can go wherever they want um, however here I'll immediately put it in a useful spot because carbonite is getting terraformed for the factories and mines and stuff I don't need environmental domes but for this planet I need environmental domes for everything except for I think transport grids and factories I think uh, power plants I think they can be outside of domes so I'll go to my colony and while we're flying down we can load in the sample map overlay there we go So I think I'll put the environmental dome immediately somewhere where there's uh, there's a lot of iron. So I can immediately build some mines once it's done. Uh, Too low terrain. Let's up. see. Where are we? Have to. Get a feel for the plot again. Uh, there. I think that's the one that had uh, 138 iron. Not entirely sure. But that's the highest I found, so I want to exploit that as fast as possible. So let's see. Oh, this might be too much beam movement. Start another one. There we go, 138. So now the important thing is that these lines are not exact. Uh, there's often a bit of an offset. Um, so I need to check that. Um, for example, is this actually part of our iron plot still?
Huh, that's quite an offset. So this is quite important, so you actually know where your resources sources are. And this is still fine. And still fine. Wow, that's a lot of blocks that you could have missed otherwise. It's probably the opposite on the other side. Yeah, see, this is different. I'm just going to put a transport grid there. Uh, plan a transport grid. Where are you? Transport grid. There. This should all be um, the other part. So let's test. Oh, this might actually be the brown one. Yeah, this is probably that one. Um, so then one, two, three, four. This one should be iron. Or, yeah, the, the right one. Yes, but this one shouldn't be. And it is, actually. How about this one? So now it's taking a bit of time, but it should be worth it in the end. There we go, this is the other one. So if then we put a transport grid there as well. And do it like that. And then just to make sure, because I want to make sure of everything, I'm just going to try this one here. Hooray, that works. So in a sense, this should then be linear. So I'm just going to put those transport grids here. That should be enough for my first dome. Um, so this should actually be uh, part of that block. Yes, and then this should actually be part of, of, of the the good stuff. There we go, perfect. So So yeah with the manta you can actually just fly upwards and I think you can fly yeah, with N uh you can actually fly backwards. And with K you fly up. So it's a very maneuverable ship. So imagine doing all of this with the Seraph just wouldn't work very well. So now I can plan my environmental dome. And there. Mm, it's actually fairly hard to see. Go up a bit more. <laughs> They're absolutely among us. So, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter too much, but something like this has all the points inside the area. Structure planned. I'll just double check that. Yeah, see, this is nicely, nicely put here. Perfect. So, our first environmental dome here, so we can supply that. Structure supply. And there we Construction go. Commence. So in two days this one will be ready, and then we can start exploiting uh, this planet and producing some iron. And the same as with uh, the carbonite colony, I'm also going to build some power plants in my Ultima colony, so when the, um, the dome is finished I can immediately start um, well, equalizing it and uh, making it 
uh, produce livable conditions. So this one, however, will have a lot of um, iron mines in there. So I don't really want to have the the carbon harvesters, or the I don't really want to have the power plants in the dome itself because that would be wasting space, and the power plants are allowed to be outside because they're automated. Um, so I'll put on the sample map. And then I'll plan some transport grids up to the outside. So this is this needs to be connected. Oh. oh. Guess I should practice drawing straight lines at some point. From there, and I'll also make one to the other side. And this is probably so much easier with a decent ship. Well, the surface is decent, but not for this kind of stuff. It's not very maneuverable. So if I send this, then these are all planned. I guess I should be able now to remove the ones I don't want. Yes. There we go. Didn't the plan. Hmm. Or is this not allowed to be outside there yet? Yes, it is. Uh, hmm. Maybe it can only plan a certain amount of buildings at the same time. Figuring out it out as we go. There we go. Uh, send. And some more here. And then I want to have the automated fission, uh, fission power plant. That's, I think, where humans have to work. So it's uh, I have to place them in the dome. So if I use the automated one there, then it should all be fine. So one, two, three. I'll just build a couple. I'll need them at some point anyway, right? So I'll send this. Yes, um, and then I will supply them by manage settlement and supply all. Completely supplied. Everything is completely supplied, it seems. Yeah, so this is all done in 22 hours, um, 13 minutes, and this thing still needs 34 hours, so. At some point this will all be finished and then we can actually equalize the atmosphere here and to set the gravity and stuff. It's all stuff I... Oh, what's with that one? I don't want that one to be there. Oh wait, there. I lost the resources, I guess. Um, yeah, so we can set the gravity and everything just to make this habitable for humans. And then we can start thinking about how to... Um, how to fit everything in here. I might in the meantime also place a second dome um, because I guess I'll need more iron mines and maybe some residential areas and all that stuff and now that I think about it these power plants are probably in a wrong position because I'm gonna put a second dome there but let's see I'll figure it out and uh, yeah so hope you find it useful and uh, see you next time <laughs>